A complete example. How does the proximity of a fire station X affect the damages Y from a fire? So what they've done here is they've collected data, and the data consists of distances from the fire station and then damage amounts in, I assume, thousands of dollars here, or perhaps millions of dollars. But either way, they have distance here in miles and then damage amounts given here. So for example, it looks like perhaps somebody who um, lives six miles from the fire station had damage of about $44,000 done to their home, and that's higher than the other values, probably because the distance is higher. So you can see the general pattern here is positive, right? What I mean by that is that as distance increases, so does the damage amount, right? So the general pattern is a positive linear model, and it looks pretty linear, right? It looks like it hugs this line pretty well. The little dots are individual data points that we normally see laid out in a table. So what they've done here is they've used a software package called SAS. I'm going to give you the output here. This software package is basically giving us all the calculations that we used to do by hand. It does it all at once when you enter the data into the computer. So this data involved 15 data points. Each one of these dots is a data point. It involved 15 of them, and they entered all 15 into the model, and then they produced all these calculation results. So what I would like to do now is I'd really like to uh, zoom into this and take a closer look and see all the things that's provided from computer output and so we can get a feel for how to interpret computer output and see how easy it is. Okay, so let's look at the computer output here provided by SAS. It has a lot of similar pieces that other computer software packages provide. So essentially, even though this is uh, specific to SAS, the way they've laid out the information, a lot of it is very similar in other programs like SPSS or Minitab, etc. So um, basically by analyzing this, we should be able to look at other software packages and analyze its out their outputs as well. So let's look at this first value I've highlighted here. It says root MSE. So they're, basically they're doing the square root of the mean squared error, right? the error term. So the root MSE is actually the same as our S value that we were calculating earlier in the notes, right? So remember S was the square root of SSE over N minus 2? Well that's what root MSE is going to be. It's the same thing and it tells us here that the number is 2.31635. So that's nice, right? We get that number and we've spent a lot of time calculating that earlier by hand and this computer output provides it for us very easily. R squared, they give us an R squared value. This time the R squared value looks like it's 92.35 or 92.4%. What is that basically telling us? Well, it's telling us the percent of variation in the damage variable. Remember, damage was the thing we're trying to predict, right? So the percent of variation among damages that can be explained by just introducing the variable distance to the model. So in other words, by looking at distances or considering distances from the fire station, you will explain 92.4% of the variation in damages that occur between homes that have caught on fire. So that's a really great uh, model then. It's a pretty strong model. You can take the square root of R squared to produce your correlation coefficient R, and that will give you the strength of the linear relationship measurement, right? And that number, of course, will be positive when you take the square root, because R squared under the square root is going to produce a positive answer always. But it turns out in this model, that's appropriate to have a positive answer, because if you remember our drawing that we looked at a moment ago, the scatter plot, it looked like it was showing a positive linear relationship, so it should be positive, right? All right, then we come down here, and we have some other things provided. We have, they say, parameter estimates. The parameters that we're trying to estimate, remember, are the, you know, for the for the model that we created, we're trying to get the y-intercept and we're trying to get the true slope. So we have estimators of that. Remember we had those beta hat values, so beta naught hat and beta one hat. Remember beta naught hat was the intercept estimator? Well, they give us that calculation. It's 10.3 roughly. That's the, um, you know, the beta naught hat value. And the beta 1 hat value they provide as well, and that's 4.92. So remember, both of those were a little bit time consuming to come up with. They've given it to us in the model. So now we have the linear regression model. We can fill it in, right? Then they have the results of a uh, hypothesis test on the slope to see if the slope is significant. It turns out it is because they're indicating that the p-value is less than 0 0.001. Um, if you don't understand that, look at the 95% confidence interval limits. They're giving us the confidence interval limits for the true slope. So they're saying that we're 95% confident the true slope is between 4.07 and 5.77. And that basically tells us that the true slope is positive, indicating a positive linear relationship, right? Because there's no zero in the interval, so we can tell the slope is significant, right? That means the model is useful. All right, and lastly, the last thing I want to look at is the final uh, situation they've given us here. They've actually provided um, all 
the data points that we entered into the model, there were 15 data points. So observations 1 to 15 here in the list are the actual data points. You can see they have distances from the firehouse and damage amounts here, right? But then for this 16th observation, which we didn't have an actual observation, they're just giving you 3.5, right? And this is something that the operator who used SAS would have entered. They would have said, you know, plug in 3.5 and make predictions about it. So you see there's no corresponding actual damage value because that number didn't exist in the data originally, but they make a predicted value using the model above and that predicted value looks like to be you know, maybe $27.5,000, right? And then from there, so basically saying somebody lives 3.5 miles from the fire station, they should have about 27,000 or 27 dollars worth of damage, right? And then they go on to give us that prediction interval. So remember how difficult the prediction interval was? It was so hard to work out. They actually provide that for us here. So they predict for a home that's three and a half miles from the fire station, that home will have a damage estimate somewhere between $22,300 thousand dollars in damage. So you can see how useful this number would be for like an insurance company, right? They could look at how far you are from the nearest fire station and they could approximate what kind of damage you would incur if your house caught fire. That would help them set the price that they should charge you for your homeowner's insurance. So this is really valuable and the SAS output makes it so user friendly. And uh, this is how it's done in the real world for the most part. You know, we enter the data into a computer, we let the computer do the calculations because there's no need to waste our time by hand doing that when the computer software does it so nicely. But what is necessary still is for a human to interpret it though. We still need a human mind to come in, read the output and make sense of it. We also need a human to properly enter the data in and call the right model or the right approach. That's another thing that is needed as well. So you can't just let the computers do everything, right? The main thing you have to know is what method to call to do the analysis and then we have to know how to interpret the analysis when it comes out. We still don't have computers that do that for us.